Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to TK and Drinks. I'm your host, TK. This is the Honest Mead Review today. We've got our first entry from the meadery there at Weird Mead and Leather there up in Portland, Oregon. This is the Weird Mead portion of their uh, their venture. This is going to be our semi-sweet traditional. Now, uh, some people may have heard me wax on about these guys in the past, uh, about their... Um, fan support group or uh, meadery support group. I don't even know what they call those uh, fan groups on Facebook. But these guys got a group called Warriors of Weird and they are some of the nicest, most inviting, welcoming, most kick-ass people I've uh, had the pleasure to be associated with, especially over the past year during the whole pandemic. They've been very embracing of the whole TK and Drinks idea, concept, and everything, even when I have not uh, been touting their particular brand of mead again weird mead here um, they didn't care they took TK in and uh, welcomed him with open arms my love uh, goes back to you guys equally thank you so much for that I could not be um, more honored to be a part of a group so let me introduce you real quick to um, Weird Leather Mead, one of the things I want to try to step up here on TK and Drinks is give you a little more behind the scenes on who these uh, meaderies are so you don't necessarily have to go out and do your own research or maybe even to encourage you more to go do your own research. That's their mead hall right there. That's freaking super freaking underground. They're there in Portland, Oregon. It looks like they're in a freaking dungeon underground. That's this giant wooden head. I can't remember what his name is, but... um. They carry them around. This is their second mead hall that they've been in in the past little while. Um, they do all sorts of cool custom uh, one-off stuff. But uh, one of the other things that they do is look at that cool door with the freaking crescent moon in it. That thing is freaking bad looking. And again, they're there in Portland, Oregon. Have all sorts of really cool stuff going on. And um, very... I actually guess from what I understand they are underground underneath another building so they may not even have any freaking um, windows or lights or anything out into the real world uh, but one of the owners and operators there his name is Travis I'm gonna butcher his last name per usual on TK and drinks Travis Sigler Ziggler Sigler um, he makes uh, leather, as you've heard me say, their name is Weird Leather and Mead. The leather part becomes before the mead part. Um, so Travis makes leather uh, armor, gauntlets, coin purses, belts, anything that you could imagine that's, uh, that you would need made out of leather. Freaking cat harness that he made. Check that out. That is about the dopest dope you ever smoked right there. Now, from what I understand, I have not watched the show. But this uh, is a girl who's on that um, Viking show, and she wears some leather pieces that uh, Travis has made for the show. That belt, that's dope looking. Got some bracers. I mean, it just goes on. I'm sure that's some sort of shield, coin purse, everything. A wallet, a knife sheath weird leather and mead there in Portland uh, I'm sure they do custom pieces ship them out whatever you need from them so uh, let's uh, set that aside and get into the more mead related stuff one of the things that they also do there at weird leather and mead while I'm getting opening up this uh, semi-sweet traditional um, they make a ton of stews of their own they have uh, things on Facebook and Instagram all the time where they're posting about hey we're gonna make this type of stew or that type of stew what would you like to see in the mead hall? Which I think is really cool because, um, as you can see, the place looks like a total like Dungeons and Dragons esque in in a tavern. Like you were playing Dungeons and Dragons. This is a place where you'd expect your adventurers to be hanging out before they were going out on their quest, drinking tankards of mead. You know, so you know it is a phenomenal place. But I want to try to show you more and give you a little bit more about the places where we're working with. Ooh, that's got a very nice pleasant uh, hint of sweetness. Now, look at that clarity that's been sitting in the fridge for a while. Got no uh, funkiness to it. Got a little bit of a 
little tiny bit of a haze to it there. Might be just in the light picking up from the glass, but oh, let's get on that slow pour before we uh, do the thing. Yes. I really hate not being able to watch the monitor on those slow pours, but it is what it is. Fuck technology. Uh, as we get into this mead, again, we got the absolute brilliant clarity on it. I might see uh, a slight bit of haze to it, some bubbles kind of percolating up from the bottom. We pull up our honey chart here. Uh, if we're going to compare it to a honey color, I don't know if we get anything good. I'm getting the. Uh, Oh, I don't know, into this realm right here, which if uh, it looks like that's a light amber color. This is supposed to be a semi-sweet, so I don't know how much residual sugar is supposed to be left over, but I'm getting quite a bit of tearing there. We got to see the little drops, see our legs. Our legs starting to form there. Oh yeah, we can see them. So there's definitely some residual sugar left over. I don't get a whole lot of legs. I mean, by quantity, number of legs, but woo, need to be a little more careful when we're washing our, washing our Darth Maul glass. We're starting to get some peelage there from the uh, sticker. Very mild on the nose. Um, light floral aroma. Let's pull out our wine wheel for our aroma wheel, floral. Uh, geranium, violet, rose, orange blossom. Um, not necessarily rose. Um, I would say more geranium leaning if, if I had to pick from those four. Slight bit of sour tartness there in the end. Don't really get any um, alcohol. None of those like sharp warming alcohol notes or anything. Actually kind of has, uh, reminds me of bee pollen has those uh, floral, woodsy, very natural notes to it. Let's go ahead and uh, give it a quick taste. Hmm. I would have to say actually, that's um, very mild. Definitely has a tang. If you watched the um, uh, my Space Time Meat and Cider Works video where I did this quick little flight tasting of the three of them, their traditional that they had made was uh, made with a Belgian ale yeast, kind of gave it this very, I say, shouldn't say kind of, it did, it gave it this tangy tartness to it. Um, and this one has a very um, similar type of taste to it, although it's very mild, doesn't get nearly that uh, sour or tart. So I don't know if it was the type of yeast they use or if it's just part of the fermentation. Maybe it was the type of honey and it's the way it's reacting with the, uh, in the whole fermentation process in general. I'm not getting too much on the body. I think it's kind of more of a lighter body. Yeah, I'd say light to light medium leaning body on it. Hint of carbonation. Hint of spiciness, a tiny bit of a, uh, little zing going on there. I don't know if that's from the, the carbonation or from the um, from the fermentation there, but um, definitely like that going on there. Did not get my uh, TK and Drinks card filled out there, so get that taken care of here. Weird leather. A-T-H-E-R and mead. This is semi-sweet. It's going to be number 67. Category is going to be a 1B for a semi sweet traditional. Trad. I just call it a trad because I'm trad boring, I guess. I don't know. Uh, let's call it a off petulant, petillant, if you're French, I suppose. Although my French is terrible, it seems how I never took French, but lightly sparkling. Uh, sweetness level. Uh, they say semi-sweet. Uh, I definitely have to agree with them there. Strength level, um, I think it's 14.5%, 13% they say. Okay, so that's pretty much standard right around in the middle of the ballpark. Honey variety, they did not declare one. 
quick uh, read on the back of the bottle. The Web of Weird. I'm assuming that's their cool logo right there. The Web of Weird. Also known as Skuld's Net. S-K-U-L-D. Skuld? Skuld? This net was woven by the Nornir, the fates of Norse legend. The symbol features nine staves containing all the Futhark runes and represents the past, present, and future. This mead was made from West Coast wildflower honey to capture the flavor of the Pacific Northwest. We are proud to share our mead with you and also raise awareness uh, for uh, honeybee conservation. Hell yeah! Fuck yeah! Honeybee conservation is where it's fucking at. Produced and bottled by Weird Leather Mead. Leather Works and Meadery, LSD, Portland, uh, 13% contains sulfites. Yep. So, definitely uh, standard on there. Wildflower honey, like we were guessing. Uh, no special ingredients. So, let's uh, get this rocking and rolling. All right, back here with that scorecard. Got that all filled out. Weird Leather and Mead, Leather Works and Meadery whatever you want to call them, semi-sweet, traditional, hitting that off with a 39 out of 50. Um, it's not necessarily my favorite semi-sweet traditional I have, but I think it's pretty dang good. Uh, 7 out of 10 on the bouquet. Uh, you definitely pick up some heavy um, honey and floral aromas in there. They're present, probably not as heavy as they could be. But um, being a wildflower honey, there's not really a lot to necessarily have to expect out of it. So the fact that I'm picking up floral notes and, and honey notes is, is good to begin with. Six out of six on the appearance on it. Again, brilliant clarity. Absolutely great on the extra light amber to light amber hue. Tiny bit of carbonation on there. Um, very well enjoyed all that. The honey characters uh, definitely come through in the flavor a little bit. Give it a 19 out of 24 on that. Um, I definitely got a little bit of a spicy taste. I don't necessarily know if that was intended on being there or not. Um, I'm going to call it phenolic taste because it definitely gives a little bit of that um, peppery taste to it. But again, a hint of sour, a hint of tartness in there. It, it balances well with the sweetness. So I definitely would agree with the uh, semi-sweet assessment uh, that they have given it and name that they have titled it. Overall, 7 out of 10, maybe could have went down a little bit lower on that, but all in all, you know, it, it's good, it tastes good, I could go back and drink it, there's a, some nitpicky things here and there that I would, put, could potentially, will potentially argue, but all in all, um, like I said, it's not necessarily my favorite, but I do think it's a good entry into the semi-sweet uh, category. If you're up there in Portland and you haven't tried them, if you have access to a Vino Shipper and you're going through, um, Get this big ass 750 bottle for I think it was 35 to 38 bucks somewhere in that realm. Um, so you can't really go wrong with that. So give it a try next time you're in the Portland area. If you're from Portland and you're there already, or if you're buying on Vino Shipper, check these guys out. Weird leather and mead out of Portland. Remember all the cool uh, leather works I showed you. My man Travis hits that all up. Be sure to uh, support these cats the uh, best you can if you're in the area you want to give those guys a shout out so have a good day good night good evening I got a few more meads from these guys coming through so be on the lookout for those other reviews coming from the weird leather and mead cats it got a blueberry vanilla a raspberry and I believe an apple mead I'm excited to try all of them I hear great things so have a good day good night good evening Peace.